Hi all, so this week for your prep you will be learning about the different categories of plastic and then their uses and their different properties. So can we all turn to this page in our booklet and write down the learning objective. So pause the video here and write down your learning objective. Fantastic. Now that we've got that down, we can learn about the different categories of plastic. And for us, there are two different categories. There's thermoforming plastics and thermosetting plastics. We are going to start off by looking at thermoforming plastics. So thermoforming plastics are plastics that can be heated and reformed multiple times. The reason why they can is because of their molecular structure. So all uh, plastics are made up of what we call polymer chains. So the order in which the polymer chains sit depends on its uh, the product's shape. So these are polymer chains. If we apply heat to a plastic, the first time we apply heat to it, the polymer chains relax. They become, it turns the polymer into a liquid state from a uh, solid state. So these polymer chains start to relax and they slide all over each other to make a liquid structure. At this point, we can take the, the liquid plastic and we can set it into a specific shape. That shape might be in the shape of a water bottle or a plastic pencil or a plastic frisbee, whatever product it is. Those polymer chains, when they set, they'll be set in a new position and that will determine the structure of the product. So, in basic terms, these um, polymer chains can go through this process time after time after time. So there's no end to this cycle. All thermoforming plastics can be reheated and remade into a product. So, for example, you might get lots of granules of a thermoforming plastic. The way that manufacturers get plastic to use, this, the way that it gets delivered is in lots of little granules. At the factory, they're going to apply heat to the granules to melt them down so that it is a liquid puddle of plastic. What they then do is form the liquid plastic. So they put it into a mould or former to create a specific product. For example, a pen. At this stage, once they've made the pen, they sell on this product, people use the pen, and then at the end, when the pen runs out of ink, this pen can then be recycled. So we can take the pen, and it can come back to the beginning of the cycle. And if the manufacturer applies heat to it to melt it down into a plastic form, we can turn it into a different plastic product. So in this instance, a different pen. And this process can continue over and over and over, almost infinitely. The only reason why we can't do it infinitely is because between these two steps, every time we melt down a plastic, some of its mass does evaporate. So the amount of molten plastic you get each time is slightly less than the time before. So it is not an uh, infinite cycle of recycling. but you can recycle thermosetting plastics. So what does that mean for us? In our booklets, you have a section that says thermoforming plastics are. And underneath, I would like you to write down the following. Thermoforming plastics are Plastics that can be heated 
and formed multiple times. Plastics that can be heated and formed multiple times. So, in terms of thermoforming plastics properties and characteristics, there's some very key bits of information that we need to know. So, the first one comes from the fact that they can be heated and formed multiple times. If, we, if this is the case, then all thermoforming plastics are recyclable. That is our first property. All thermoforming plastics can be recycled. That does not mean that they are always recycled. There has to be the infrastructure in place in your local authority. But most uh, thermoforming plastics are recycled from household waste. Some aren't because they are slightly more difficult to recycle. Our next property is that they um, melt when they are heated. The next one is linked to those polymer chains. The reason why is because the polymer chains, they are more flexible, they can move better when it gets warmer, they can move around each other. That means that generally thermoforming plastics are flexible. So think of a water bottle. Water bottles are made from polypropylene most of the time, which is a type of thermoforming plastic. When the water bottle is empty, you can fold and bend and manipulate that plastic. That means that it is flexible. It also means that the, the thermoforming plastics are impact resistant. Impact resistant. What do I mean by that? So thermoforming plastics, you can hit them with a hard object, you can throw them on the floor, you can stand on them and they will not shatter, they will not completely break apart. Yes, they will become damaged, but they will not shatter into a, millions, a million different pieces. That means that they are impact resistant. So imagine you had a water bottle again, empty, and you could like hit it against your hand, you can punch it into um, a table and it will not completely disintegrate into different pieces. It will break, but it has more impact resistance. The final one is about the specific plastic names. So plastics are notorious for having really, really complicated names and really long names with lots of different words in there. The best way that we can pinpoint whether a plastic is a thermoforming or thermosetting plastic is by the name. So if the name has poly somewhere in the name, it is a thermoforming plastic. So our final characteristic is that it has poly in the name. Okay, so, so far we've learned that thermoforming plastics are plastics that can be heated and formed multiple times. This means that they are recyclable and that they melt when they are heated. In terms of what the plastics are like, they can be generally more flexible and impact resistant. And the best way that we can spot whether a plastic is a thermoforming or thermosetting plastic is by the name. And specifically, if it has poly in the name, it is a thermoforming plastic. Okay, so the next part of the, the, um, the page in front of you, it has a table which is asking for examples of thermoforming plastics. 
and the uses of those specific thermoforming plastics. What I would like to do is pause the video here, do a quick Google search and find some uh, specific um, thermoforming plastic names and their specific uses to fill out that table. Once you've done that, come back to this video and press play. Okay, so if you're watching this, you have completed the examples of thermoforming plastics table. So now you can turn to the next page where you have got a section for thermosetting plastics. So thermosetting plastics are basically the opposite of thermoforming plastics. All of their characteristics are pretty much opposite to the ones of thermoforming. And that is down to its uh, structure and in terms of its polymer chains. So thermosetting plastics, when you first get them and you heat them down for the first time, it's exactly the same as your thermoforming plastics. So you've got polymer chains that once you heat them, they relax and they join together a bit more. They, they are in a liquid state. At this stage, when they are set into a specific shape, uh, into a product, something happens to the polymer chains. So it will be set into whatever shape is required. So the polymer chains are now separate. They are set in a position. Thermosetting plastics get a, an additional part to the, the, this structure. So what actually happens is that they gain these extra parts. So we have got our polymer chains here. But these red sections, they are new. They are not in thermoforming plastics and they are called cross links. Those cross links are set. They cannot be removed, they cannot be moved, they cannot be taken away. They are there for good now. That means that if you apply heat to a thermosetting plastic that has already been set once, these cross links stop the polymer chains from relaxing and flowing away from each other into a liquid state. That means that thermosetting plastics cannot be heated and formed more than once. It can only go through the heating liquid setting process once. So, where it says thermoforming plastics are, I would like you to write the following. Thermoforming plastics are plastics that can only be heated and formed one. Those are the all important parts. They're plastics that can only be heated and formed once. That means that once a, a product has been made out of thermoforming plastics, that that product cannot be broken down and made into something else. Which means that thermoforming plastics are not recyclable. They're non-recyclable. That is our first characteristic. They are non-recyclable. And because of our cross-links, those cross-links that attach together, they burn when they are heated. If you try to melt down a thermoforming plastic, all that's going to happen is that it's going to burn and it's going to char. So they burn when heated.
Our third characteristic is that they have crosslinks. What crosslinks do is prevent the plastic from melting a second time. In terms of what the plastics are like, they are very different to thermoforming plastics. Oh, I just realised I got this wrong. This is thermosetting. So in terms of what they're like, they are brittle so they cannot withstand impacts as well as thermoforming plastics they work kind of the same way as glass if you were to hit it with a hammer the whole piece of plastic is going to shatter into loads of different pieces so they are strong but breaks easily that means that they are brittle the explanation in the brackets there. So brittle means that the plastics are strong but they shatter easily. And like with our thermoforming plastics, our last characteristic is all about how we can pinpoint which plastic is thermosetting and it's all in the name. So for thermosetting plastics, if the name has formaldehyde or resin in, Sorry about that. So if they have formaldehyde or resin in the name, then it is a thermosetting plastic. So it has formaldehyde or resin in the name. If it has either of these two words in, the, in a, the plastic name, it means it is a thermosetting plastic. There is one exception to this rule. There is a plastic called polyester resin. Now, it has poly in the name and it has resin. So the poly tells us it's a thermoforming plastic, resin tells us it's a thermosetting plastic. What do we do in this situation? If you ever see a plastic name with indicators of both types of plastic categories, the thermosetting plastic one always wins. So it's kind of like top trumps. If you get resin or formaldehyde, as well as poly in the name, the resin or formaldehyde will always beat the poly because it means that there are crosslinks in the plastic, which means that it is a thermosetting plastic. OK, guys, so the last part of this video and your task is to fill in the table with examples of thermosetting plastics and their uses. So have a quick Google research and try to fill out that table with five different plastic names and uses of those different plastics. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please email me on my school email and I will help you out. I will see you in our next lesson. Thank you guys. Bye.